The National Guard, the Zoot Suit Riots, and Big are all on this day. Welcome back to On This Day. Today's date is June 3rd, 2021. It is the 154th day of the year. There are 211 days left in this year. It's the 22nd Tuesday in the 23rd week and the 76th day of spring. We got 18 days left till summer. Almost there. If today's your birthday, your birthstone is a pearl or a moonstone. Your choice. Like I have a firm belief that pearl, if you got some money, moonstone, not so much money. Today is National Egg Day. National Egg Day is observed to emphasize the benefits of eggs and their importance to human nutrition. According to the American Heart Association guidelines, the health benefits of eggs outweigh the concerns over cholesterol. That was a big thing. Don't eat eggs. The cholesterol is going to kill you and all this other stuff. And then like five years later, they came out and said, nah, it's not that bad. The AHA says healthy adults can enjoy one egg per day and easily remain within the daily cholesterol limits. National Egg Day is celebrated annually on the 3rd of June in the United States. All right, let's see what else June 3rd has given us. 1889, the first long distance electrical power transmission line in the United States is completed, running 14 miles, about 23 kilometers, between a generator at Willamette Falls and downtown Portland, Oregon. Yeah, I didn't even know that till I read this. That's pretty interesting. 1889, hmm. 1916, the National Defense Act is signed into law, increasing the size of the United States National Guard by 450,000 men or women. Back in the day, it was just pretty much men, I believe. I'm sure they had some women, but 99% men. I was in the National Guard for a while. I went from the U.S. Army to the National Guard for a few years after I got out. I wasn't a big fan. I mean, I got the purpose and I understood it. And I just was so used to that regular army life that when I got there, they seemed a little lax. They've gotten much better since then, but it just uh, didn't seem that military to me. It's weird, but they do a lot of good things. I'm not bashing them at all. It's just my own personal observation. In 1943, in Los Angeles, California, white U.S. Navy sailors and Marines attack Latino youths in the five-day Zoot Suit Riots. The Zoot Suit Riots were a series of violent clashes during which a mob of U.S. servicemen, off-duty police officers, and civilians brawled with young Latinos and other minorities in Los Angeles. So the backstory to this goes back a couple of years. Racial animosity had been on the rise in Los Angeles for a few years. After the riots, a commission was appointed to investigate what had happened, and they found a few things. First, the local media had been leaning heavily into the narrative that all violent crimes in L.A. were from black and Latino youths. Tensions were high in the United States because of the hardships people faced because of World War II. The U.S. also faced a labor shortage due to the war, so a program between U.S. and Mexico let thousands of temporary workers move to L.A. This made a bad situation worse as far as the white population in L.A. felt. There was already a good size Hispanic population in L.A., and then they just brought in thousands more. L.A. wasn't terribly large at the time compared to, like, what it is today. So, you know, three, 4,000 more Latinos to a racist white person was just too much to handle. And then there were the zoot suits. Actually, this was part of the cause they found for the riot. Latino youths in California were known as pachucos, often wearing flashy zoot suits, big hats, and dangly watches on chains. They were increasingly viewed by affluent whites as menacing street thugs, gang members, and rebellious juvenile delinquents. On top of that, there were severe rationings because of the war, including rationing on wool. Zoot suits were big, baggy, and not something you'd wear to work in a factory, so clothing like that was definitely banned. As always, when you outlaw something, a black market develops. Pachucos wearing black market zoot suits became the spark that started the fire. On May 31st, a fight happened in downtown LA with some sailors and pachucos. After stewing for a couple days, the sailors, marines, and some off-duty police officers drove and took cabs to a Mexican neighborhood with baseball bats and 2 by 4s They attacked anyone with baggy suits on. This included going into bars, movie theaters, and dance halls, and just dragging people onto the street to beat them up. They stripped them them and burn their zoot suits right there in the street. This went on for a few more days until the military was ordered out of Los Angeles completely. And the only ones that were there were the MPs to make sure none of the sailors came back. 
and eventually the National Guard was called in. Local press still, you know, doubling down on what they'd already been doing, framed this as vigilantes helping the police out with a crime wave. Yeah, like the police were overwhelmed and they need sailors and Marines to go around with baseball bats fixing all of LA's problems. It's a weird time. I was in the military when we had the LA riots in the early 90s and they'd sent us down to Los Angeles to help with those riots and stuff. And then I just went on this big research thing for years of learning about all these riots and how they happened. I think because I was involved with one and this, the Zoot Suit Riots, is something I've always been interested in. 1962, at Paris Orly Airport, Air France Flight 007 overruns the runway and explodes when the crew attempts to abort takeoff, killing 130 people. 1979, a blowout at an oil well in the southern Gulf of Mexico causes at least 3 million barrels of oil to spill into the waters, the second worst accidental oil spill ever recorded. 1980, the Grand Island tornado outbreak hits Nebraska, causing five deaths and over $300 million worth of damage. In 2020 numbers, that's like almost a billion dollars, $942 million. 1998, after suffering mechanical failure, a high-speed train derails in Germany, killing 101 people. 2012, the pageant for the Diamond Jubilee of Elizabeth II takes place on the River Thames. You know, I know how it's pronounced, but I will tell you right now, I tried to call it the River Thames. You know, it just looks like Thames or Thames to me. To everyone else, too, unless you're from Great Britain or whatever. It's just really strange for us Americans. We instantly want to call it Thames, but it's called Thames. Movies released on June 3rd. Now, this is a big one. I'm going to go over some of the movies because this is the time of year when big movies start coming out. The beginning of summer and all that. So I'm going to go over a couple of the biggest movies from this date. 1988. Big with Tom Hanks. This was such a great movie. If you've never seen it, he makes a wish to some carnival fortune teller machine that he wants to be big and he wants to be older. And it happens. But he's still got the brain of a 12-year-old kid. It's a great movie. 2011, we got X-Men First Class. Now, not really the best X-Men movie, but it had one of my favorite X-Men of all time. It had Havoc in it, which if you don't know the whole X-Men thing, that's actually Cyclops, Scott Summers. That's his brother, Alex Summers. It was played by Lucas Till. If you don't know who Lucas Till is, he goes all the way back to Hannah Montana, the movie. Um, he was on House, Medium, and then when they revived uh, MacGyver, he played MacGyver. Pretty good actor. I like him. 2005, we got Cinderella Man with Russell Crowe, Renee Zellweger, Paul Giamatti, Bruce McGill. Such a great movie. It's the true story about James J. Braddock. He was a boxer working as a laborer during the Great Depression. They didn't have any fights, and he was just, a, you know, he was one of those guys they just threw in there. Well, during the Depression and not being able to work and his kids going hungry made him desperate. And uh, he started fighting far better than he ever fought before in his career. And he was at the tail end of his career at this point. And he ends up becoming the champion. It's a great true story. 2013, this is the end. This is an amazing movie and not a lot of people know about it. It's got Emma Watson, Rihanna, Paul Rudd, James Franco, Seth Rogen, Jonah Hill, Michael Sarah, Craig Robinson, Danny McBride, and Jay Bruce Gull, or whatever his name is. This movie is so weird because they all played themselves. All these stars, you know, young Hollywood, go over to James Franco's house for a big party. While they're having the big party, the apocalypse hits. Demons are coming out of the ground. There's no explanation how it got to this point. It just happens. And all these stars are trying to survive this, you know, apocalyptic thing with demons and people killing each other. It's just a mind-blowing movie if you ever get a chance to watch it. Born on June 3rd, 1967, Anderson Cooper, American journalist, author. He's the primary anchor on CNN News broadcast show, Anderson Cooper 360. Died on June 3rd. Seems kind of fitting, considering Russell Crowe's movie came out, but the greatest. Muhammad Ali died, 2016. American boxer, nicknamed the greatest. He's widely regarded as one of the most significant and celebrated cultural figures of the 20th century, frequently ranked as the best heavyweight boxer and greatest athlete of the century. He died at the age of 74 due to septic shock from a respiratory illness. Muhammad Ali, I mean, besides the over-the-top personality that he was, he was easily one of the top 10 best boxers we've ever seen. Amazing. I actually have a quote hanging on my wall in my office from Gorgeous George, the old wrestler, who said this to Muhammad Ali as his career was starting. And that kind of gave Muhammad Ali, they say, the spark 
to take on that personality of that over-the-top talking trash about everyone. But he had met Gorgeous George the Wrestler, and he was talking about his career, and he was talking about getting people to come see his things. And his quote was, A lot more people will pay to see someone shut your mouth. In other words, if you're obnoxious and people want to see you lose, that's more of a motivation to come watch you than if they want to see you win. It's really weird. I kind of understand that having a YouTube channel. All right, that's today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you got some information out of it. Now go out, have a productive day, and be nice to each other.